Hello Magic players, Skylagger speaking from France, and today we are building a fan cube, so stay tuned! Are you ready to TAKE CONTROL OF THE GAME? Did I just break it? So, Unstable came out last month, and maybe you invested in some boxes for the lands, or maybe just for the future, and now the prices are kind of dropping. Maybe you entered several drafts at your local game store and now you have plenty of cards and you don't really know what to do about them. Maybe for Christmas, someone gave you some unstable boxes thinking that magic was about fun. What? Fun? Whatever. Now you have some unstable boxes and you don't really know what to do about them. But I have the solution for you. Let's build an unstable, unglued, and unhinged draft and sealed cube. Let's go! First of all, let's check the math behind this cube. I wanted a large cube designed for up to 16 players. This way, even when playing with smaller groups, variance would be quite high and every draft would be different. So I settled on 720 cards. But, uh-oh. Unstable is a very small addition, so getting bored can be quite easy. That's why I included some cards from the past fun editions, unglued and unhinged. Then there was the contraption problem. 15 cards packs with two contraptions would only offer 39 cards per player to build his or her deck, which can be a problem, especially in a set designed toward a light colors build. I really wanted people to play with three colors or enemy colors as much as possible. Plus, remember that there is a five colors Planeswalker in the sets. I wanted Urza to be drafted, picked and played, so I had to do something. So I said to myself, yeah, whatever, let's tweak the numbers and here is what I ended up with. 14 cards per pack with two contraptions. So that's 16 cards per pack. That's a little bit different from real life drafts, but whatever, that's a fun addition, right? And in total, that means 672 cards plus 92 contraptions. Oh, and before I forget, I want an unstable booster packs. Literally unstable. In this cube, I think it's best to shuffle together commons and uncommons and distribute them at random. Then you will have a little over 4.5 uncommons per pack and a little over 7.5 commons per pack. And here is the crazy thing. One out of two packs will have two rares. Yes, two rares. First, because it helps make the cube interesting after several drafts. And because many rares are just so dumb that I wanted as many as possible in this cube. To keep those powerful rares in check, you'll see that I put quite a lot of removals in that cube. But that will make it more interactive, so I think that's fine. Now, let's take a closer look to the numbers. To create this cube, I kept things quite simple. With a few exceptions, I put 5 copies of each common, 3 copies of each uncommon, and 1 copy of each rare and mythic, with the notable exception of the Grand Calcutron, but that's just because I don't like the card. For commons with several versions such as those cards, I considered them as only one card, uh, their text doesn't really differ, right? They only have different arts and maybe different flavor texts, so... For me, that's basically the same card. The only exception is Secret Base, and that's because I wanted to help mana fixing, which can be a problem in, the, in this set. So I put 5 of each version, so that's 25 copies total. For the uncommons, I put each version of Garbage Elemental, as I found them very flavorful. The only version of Knight of the Kitchen Sink that I didn't take was version A, because there won't be any black bordered card in this cube. I also cut Slice Pie version C, just because there's no real down downside for not doing its effect, unlike Skull Saucer. For the rares, version A of Very Cryptic Command didn't make the cut, as it lacks a bit of flavor compared to the other versions. 
I didn't take Ineffable Blessing B and C version because I don't want to play with artists' mechanics and because there are only silver bordered cards in this cube, so C version would be too powerful. And I only kept version A, B and C of Everything and Magic because version D and E require to know the set quite well and version F is a bit too wacky for me. One thing I had to do to ensure players would be able to play and to cast Urza is to modify a little bit the text, so I did some kind of Oracle Errata and I highly recommend you do so when you're playing with this cube if you decide to play it. Uh, what I decided to do is to give Urza every watermarks, because without secret bases you are not very likely to cast Urza, and I mean, this card is so much fun, you, you have to play it. It's so it's such a wasted slot if you draft it and you're not putting it in your, in your deck, so I really wanted players to be able to cast Urza and to activate its uh, 100 or I don't really know how much, how many abilities. And finally, for contraptions, I decided to put three copies of each common, two copies of each uncommon, and one copy of each rare and mythic. Unfortunately, that only makes 90 cards when we need 96 in order to put two contraptions in each pack. But instead of just taking 6 bulk commons and add them to your contraption list, here's what you can do. Select or choose at random 4 rares and 2 mythics and here you go! That's it for the unstable part, see you in the next video for the unglued and unhinged supplements and explanations.